it's the 7th of December and I've decided to soldier on with uh, my 24 ghost stories for Christmas regardless of uh, technical issues so again apologies for my webcam anyway so um, the 7th of December and it's time for the 7th entry I've already said that anyway the 7th entry is The Changeling it's another film it was made in 1980 uh, directed by Peter Medak and uh, written by Russell Hunter uh, the film stars George C. Scott and it is one of my favourite haunted house films. The film uh, follows George C. Scott who is a famous composer who at the beginning of the film loses his wife and child in a horrible car accident. He witnesses this happen and of course this would be enough to send anyone over the edge and eventually what happens is that he decides you know they're not coming back and he he packs up and moves out of the city to a small town where he's offered a job as a lecturer at a, a university or college um, and this causes quite a stir because he's well known for his uh, compositions so while he's there he decides he needs to try and find uh, a house and he decides to rent one because he doesn't know how long he's going to be there but he wants a house that is uh, quite secluded and, and uh, large and a bit of character to it and allow him to sit on his own and, and write uh, write music not be bothered by anyone so he rents this local house very, you know, extremely cheaply and um, it's huge it's a, it's a really really big house I think it's got sort of three or four levels to it um, it's this really quite sort of bombastic um, architecture and uh, everything seems to be fine gets the house kitted out everything sorted and then he sits to start composing music while he's there he starts <coughs> hearing noises uh, a booming noise echoing throughout the house tries to find the origin of this noise and he cannot eventually he does find the origin of it and he asks around and manages to find a few locals that tell him that uh, well one local in particular that tells him that that house does not want the living that house does not want people living in it and he uh, sets about trying to get to the bottom of what's going on he then discovers that most probably the ghost or whatever it is in the house is the ghost of a child and this obviously plays upon the fact that he's lost a child so he sets about trying to find out how he can help this thing in his house and, and, and what does it want what's the message that's trying to give it convey to him and he has uh sorry i thought that was a hair there just i'm not just randomly going rrr, rrr. um and he uh, sets up a seance in his house he gets told that he, sh he should uh, ask this medium to his house who's very very good and she gives him a lot of information about what's going on and eventually it all comes down to the fact that um, there's a terrible secret to do with the house and it involves a, a very very important um, local businessman who is um, extremely wealthy extremely uh, influential in fact is he is, is he a congressman or uh, I think he might be actually sorry um, but he's he is very influential which shows you I should have watched this film before I did this video and it comes down to him hiding some sort of terrible secret so that's what it's about I think it's a fantastic uh, ghost story it's a haunted house film although some of the the supernatural phenomena occurs away from the, the sort of main house in the story but it is primarily a haunted house film. Josie Scott is just fantastic in a bit. Josie Scott was fantastic in everything that he did. He really gives a, a fantastic powerful performance as this man you know suffering the, the ultimate grief and um, taking it upon himself to try and get to the bottom of this mystery what's interesting about the film I find interesting is afterwards when you read about it that Russell Hunter the writer I don't think he ever wrote anything ever again he wrote the one story 
and he claims that the story was what happened to him um, he had went and there's an account of it online and interestingly people will say oh well maybe he's trying to sell the film I don't think the account of this came out until six years after the film I found an article from 1986 where Russell Hunter said this is where I got the idea for the story and he claimed that a lot of the things that happened happened to him when he tried to uh, when he rented this house and moved into this house and uh, that sort of makes the film even more interesting in some ways regardless of whether you believe in these things or not it's uh, an interesting proposition there are some real scares in this film I suppose there are a few shocking moments a few uh, jumps to the or jokes to the nerves but for the most part it's atmosphere that's what the film is it's atmosphere and the use of sound which is just brilliantly done um, there's a moment with a wheelchair which I suppose you could think is bordering on the comical but um, apart from that you know some people actually find that part of the film terrifying but the whole the whole story is great um, I remember the first time I watched the film and I thought that the ending was quite weak I thought the ending was quite weak but on further viewings I sort of changed my mind on that I think the ending is stronger than I thought it was it's just that it doesn't really give you the resolution that you want you see the problem with this with this film with the story rather um, and it's not really not a, not a problem it's not a criticism of it it's, it's just an aspect of the story is that everybody's a victim every single person in the film is a victim in some way or another and because of that you know you don't really get the sort of protagonist antagonist sort of uh, conflict in the film to a great degree you get it to, to a certain degree but really everyone is a victim and because of that the ending just kind of happens and it's kind of like all of these bad things have happened and it's almost as if you know well none of it really mattered you know uh, it just happened and there wasn't much of a rhyme or reason to it but that being said it is a mystery which the classic ghost stories are it is a bit of man trying to get to the bottom of that mystery, out to the bottom of, of the, the, the haunting, which is now cliched within the ghost story uh, genre, but try to find out why is this ghost haunting us, you know. Um, when that becomes the focus of the story, it can feel a little bit cliched, but with the change on it doesn't, it's just so powerfully done. And I think it's a shame that the director... Um, I don't think he really did. I think he, I think he did a lot. He's done a lot of work in television, but I really wish he'd maybe done other horror films. And George C. Scott is in two of my favorite horror films of all time, which is um, Legion or The Exorcist Three, and uh, this The Changeling. Uh, great, great ghost story. Um, it's not quite up there with The Haunting or The Innocence, but I don't think it's that far behind. It's a different type of film, but really, really wonderful and will leave you thinking about it for some time once you watch it and lastly I think there's a lot of similarities to The Ring in this film just uh, have a think about that once you've watched it and let me know if you think that there are similarities to it I don't want to outline what the similarities are because it will give away parts of the plot okay so that's the 7th of December that's uh, The Changeling and I'll be back tomorrow with another entry in the 24 Ghost Stories for Christmas hope you're all having a Merry season, and I'll uh, speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.